Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today I wanted to give you an update on my food forest, what has been growing, what has not survived, and what the future for the food forest is going to look like a little bit. Now, there's a lot of plants that have done well. There's some that have not survived, and there's projects that are still yet undone. So let me go over what we've done so far and how things are doing. Now I count my entire yard as a food forest because I grow fruit trees as ornamentals and they're scattered all over the place. So I'm just going to show you a bunch of, well, I think I'll just cover all of them and show you how they're doing. Now I do have the new food area of my food forest that I planted and we'll try to um, really cover that area in detail. So the first thing I wanted to show you was my passion vine. It's doing extremely well. So this is actually the Maypop hardy passion vine rather than the tropical passion vine. Now it's flowered. I'll include a video up at the top that shows you what the flowers look like and a little bit more about how to grow them in cold areas. But keep in mind, this is the first year. Supposedly the vine will die down once the frost hits to the ground. I'm going to mulch it really heavily and see if we can get it to grow again next year. But it's done really well. It has not fruited yet, but it has flowered a ton. So I'm hoping for next year to get fruit. So the passion vine has done really well. And I think I'm going to probably try and build a trellis over this area so that it has more of a chance to climb over the top of the trellis. I think it would be even happier that way. Now here we have my jujube. It's filled in just like it usually does every year. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can see we're getting a nice crop of jujubes coming in. Let's look over here. It's a little cloudy today, so the light is a little difficult. But you can see, you know, they're not quite up to size yet. When they start getting, you know, they'll get probably twice this big, and then they'll start turning brown around the outsides of it. And that's when they're ripe. And they are absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love my jujube. And I will put a couple of videos down at the bottom that talk about how to preserve them and how to grow jujubes. So the jujubes are doing well. Service berries are doing just as good as they've always done. We had a great harvest this year with enough left to dry on the vine. And they are, I tried drying them this year and they are not good at all. All you can taste is the little seeds in the center that have kind of a, well, kind of the taste of an apricot pit. Not sweet like the, um, not sweet like almonds, but kind of that apricot flavor and it's not pleasing at all. So drying, the service berries isn't great. Sometimes I'll crush them up and freeze them and then mix them in with the jams that I make. So service, the service berries are doing really well. We've got my one lone pluot tree that's ready for its last trim of the season. It's actually a little late for the last trim, but I need to cut the height off of that because I use the grow a little fruit tree method. Should have done that in August. It's the beginning of September and it's a little late, but I need to get those pruned back because it's really starting to come into its own. But we have a couple of dapple dandy pluots that are just about right. There's a couple more over here. Now what I'd like to do is get another flavor king and flavor supreme pluot so that they can pollinate each other. But in my next video I'm going to have to discuss how my food forest needs to change because of some issues that have come up and you know I've got to make some hard decisions. So I will go over that in my next video. Now here's my grow a little fruit tree set of two apples and a pear. These were planted way back in 2008. So they're older trees. You can see down at the base there, you can see an apple on the left. This is the pear right here. Had an excellent harvest of pears this year. The apples have been alternate bearing, which I hope to fix next year. So this year I've got very few apples on it, but the apples are delicious. This is a September Wonder Fuji. There's a couple of my apples that are almost ready to pick down there. And then I have one on the other side. I'm not going to head back there, but on the other side is a Jonah Gold. So the apples, I think what I'm going to need to do, what I read that you need to do is instead of thinning just the apples, I need to thin, you know, the entire group, you know, the clumps of apples that grow. So, you know, the next year I'll show you. That doesn't make much sense when I say it right now, but next year when I do the thinning, I will show you how I do it, how I do it and then see if it stops the alternate bearing on these apple trees. 
So an excellent crop of pears, not so excellent crop of apples, but the trees are very healthy and doing well. So now we're at the top of my food forest. Down here is the new section, way down there. There's my apples right there in pear. And right here, we have my Santa Rosa plum that I ended up having an excellent harvest off. And I crushed those all up and they're in the freezer being, well, we've got to decide what to do with that now. Um, we'll talk about that in the next video. Cherries, I dried them. A very good harvest. The only issue was is I harvested them a little bit late and the birds had already started eating them. They'd started rotting a little bit on the inside and they had worms. I usually try to harvest them just before peak perfection because then the worms are too small to see. <laughs> so anyway, and then the other thing I do for the worms is I will take the pits out using my little pitter and then soak them in water after that and that removes the worms. Then you can either freeze them or dry them and they're great both ways. We had an excellent harvest of peaches and nectarines that I had to give all away and we will discuss why a little bit later. Oh, but we did miss a few. You can see these are my O. Henry peaches. They're my last peach and I need to harvest those and give them to my stepmom because they are so good. Oh, here's another one. How did we miss these? Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my heavens. I may need to have her come take these because at this point, and we'll discuss it in my next video, I cannot eat fruit anymore. <laughs> it's killing me, absolutely killing me. So I did dry all of my nectarines just in case later I'm able to have nectarines again. You can see a few on the ground left over. I thought, really seriously thought we had these all taken care of. There's another one up there and they are the best things ever. Oh my word, these nectarines are good. We gave away all my grapes except for the ones I turned into raisins. And those raisins, uh, well, there's a few of my Jupiter grapes still left. See, this is not good. Temptation, temptation, temptation. Yeah, there's some of the Jupiter grapes. Let's get past this leaf here. See how gorgeous they are? They're really good. This year, we solved the problem of having tiny, tiny grape clusters. This is what they've looked like in the past, really tiny. But as you can see, they're starting to get bigger and it's because I added, I added a drip line that's buried around the outside edge. You know, they weren't getting any water, but they survived with almost no water for a lot of years and they pr produced really tiny grapes though. So the Jupiter grapes did really well. All the grapes had a prolific harvest all the way down. So we're going to have to, I, I don't think I will remove them. You know, hopefully someday, eventually I'll be able to eat grapes again, but at least I can share them. So we're not going to be removing the grapevines. So that was a tour of the fruit trees in my backyard that are not part of the newer food forest. So let's go to the front yard, look at those, and then we'll come back over here to the new food forest and show you what's going on there. Right here we have my older pawpaw tree. This was also planted in, I think, 2009 or so. And we had a wonderful crop of 12 pawpaws without a pollinator. This one is a Davis. And they were so good, but they were undersized. They were smaller than usual. I'll see if I can find a picture. You know, I didn't do a video of those when I harvested them. But I'll try and show you a picture of what they looked like. But I do have a harvest video that I will show you from last year. So this one's doing really well. Now, if you look at the leaves, they're looking really poorly. This used to scare me. It happens every year, but this is the first tree in my yard to go dormant. And this is a sign that it's done for the year. The leaves are all gonna fall off. This is first week in September, and they're usually gone and done. It's dormant, totally dormant by mid-September usually. So it doesn't scare me anymore, but it does, well, okay. It does make me a little bit nervous when it starts looking like this, but I've got to remind myself it does this every year. Here's the structure I made to protect my three-year-old papa. And I think next year we will not be covering it and see how well it does. We're gonna have irrigation to it. It's still very tiny, did not have a lot of new growth, but I'm hoping that the roots are set enough that it's gonna do well. This whole area, as you can see, my front yard has not changed yet. Uh, this year is a hard year for contractors. 
and the contractor that was supposed to come and do the hardscape part of my front yard still has not been able to come. He keeps say saying that he's going to be able to come. But I may try and start a little bit of myself depending on my energy levels. We'll see what happens. But this whole area is going to change. We'll divide and move these mums so that it doesn't smother the little tiny pawpaw here. And it'll be fun to see how this changes. We've also got my medlar that I'm going to leave the medlars on it no matter how hard it freezes. I'm going to leave them until the end of November and see if we can actually get them to blet properly. I have never been able to get these to be edible. Supposedly, they turn really soft and dark brown. I've had one or two blet properly, but not enough to do the preserves I'd like to do with them. So we're going to try again this year. Um, even if I can't get the, you know, the fruit to be palatable, we're gonna you know we're gonna always keep the tree it's just a beautiful little tree and it's very unusual so i really do like it for that aspect at least but as you can see we've got a ton of medlars on there and they're kind of cute so we'll keep it okay so the other papa that was under the shelter was a seedling this one is my brand new sunflower from this year Sorry, let's see if we can get this up so you can see it. This is a sunflower papa. It's doing quite well. We've also got our Cape gooseberry or Cape. This, this is a ground cherry. Look at all the fruit on it. This is another one that I really shouldn't be eating. Here's a ripe one. And you can see what they look like when they're ripe. And I did not like them last year. And before I found out that I shouldn't be eating them, and maybe even a little bit of cheating after, I found out I really like them. Of course, you become a forbidden fruit and you become very delicious. So we have a lot of ground cherries through here. You can see some more ripe ones over here. These do not fall off the vine like regular ground cherries. They're ripe when, they are, when the husk is all papery and they turn orange. Right here, I think we have a Juliet Crimson. I'll have to put the name on the screen because I cannot remember the name of it, but it is a bush cherry and it's crimson something. But anyway, it's, a, it's doing quite well and we'll see how it does. Supposedly, you're supposed to have a, a pollinator, another different type of bush cherry to be able to get a large crop. But since I am no longer able to eat fruit, We'll probably see how this does on its own, see if it crops, and it'll just have to share the fruit. We've got a little Borealis. This is a Borealis honeyberry. It's struggling a little bit, but I think that it should pull out of it. It's not dying. We've got some new growth on it, so I think it should be fine. Now, honeyberries, I think, may end up being fine, but we'll see. So this is the Borealis honeyberry. So now we're up here on the other side of my property, which is doing beautifully. I planted a bunch of ground cherries. I have six of them, which of course I can no longer eat, but I am drying them for just in case that changes. You can see all the ripe ground cherries on the ground. Let's show you what they look like. This is what they look like when they're ripe. I'll have to go feed that, you know, give this to somebody else but they're so tasty. And when they dry, they're even better. This is what the pods look like when they're not ripe and supposedly they're poisonous when they're green. So don't eat them while they're green. And there's a little tiny flower. It's creating more. My chokeberry did not do well here. I think it gets way too much water. So next spring, I'm going to be moving this chokeberry possibly planting another hydrangea. We'll see how that goes. And uh, see if, you know, see if we can get it to grow better somewhere else. Now, these little fruits are edible. They're starting to dry. I don't know if they're okay to eat or not for me, but they are not tasty. They're very, very sweet, but they end up drying out your mouth quite a bit, and it's kind of unpleasing to me. So I don't know if I'm gonna 
eat them, but I'm going to grow them because supposedly the fall color is gorgeous. I don't know if I'm going to get good fall color on these because they have been very chlorotic and have had weak growth because of the extra water they're getting from the lawn. Now for my figs. My figs have exploded. This one's a Chicago Hardy. This one's the Desert King that I started from a cutting. And they are loaded with baby fruits. I and mean, look at that branch. Every single branch has fruit like that. Look at those. Now, as I said, this is September and none of them are even close to being ripe. I'm panicking a little bit. Well, I, I'm not supposed to eat them anyway, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I could share them. I could probably eat one. Maybe I'll cheat and eat one or two, which I may have to do with supervision because I love figs. But yeah, look at how many figs are on this. And look at this one little branch right here. So one thing I did, you know, I've been asking around how to get them to ripen before it freezes. And somebody said to pinch the tips, stop the upward growth, pinch the tips, and then I need to remove the small little fruits. And we'll see if we can get some of the lower ones to ripen. But I mean, we've got fruit just continually starting. So we're going to see if we can get these to ripen. I'll let you know if this experiment with pulling off the young fruit and tipping them helps. So you know, we've got this little baby fruit here, this one here, this one here. You know, our first killing freeze is usually mid-October. Sometimes we'll have it at the end of September. So we've only got a few weeks to get these ripened. Now the Desert King has also done the same thing. Well, there's a few fruits down here. So I don't know if you can see those. Let's see if we can get it so you can see these fruits. There's fruits down here. I thought there was more than that. Yeah, there's, there's one right, there's one right there. There's another one there. So anyway, the figs are doing really well. And we're just going to have to see what we can do to get them to ripen and then see what I can do about cheating, not cheating. There. There. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go through today and see what we can do about this. And as you notice, I'm going to have to be really careful because I do get an itchy reaction to the sap that comes out of the fig tree. It's kind of a caustic sap and it can't, you know, I don't know if it's ever burnt anybody, but it can cause little itchy welts, at least on me. So I'm going to have to be careful. Maybe uh, start at the bottom first and go up. Yeah, you can see where it's dripping now. So anyway, those, that's the update on my fig trees. Now the last tree I want to highlight in my front yard is my pistachio. And see how gorgeous this is. It is really taken off in growth. I think the leaves are really, really pretty. And unfortunately with pistachios, you cannot tell, you have to have a male and a female. I have another plant in the backyard, another pistachio tree in the backyard that's about half this size. And I, all I can do is hope that one's a male and one's a female. They take about eight years to start bearing fruit. And you only know at that time if it's a male or a female. Um, so. What I've done is I have purchased some more hardy pistachio seedlings, five more. I'm going to plant, you know, find a place to plant one more on my property and then share the other ones with select people who, you know, I will choose that live close by. And if they find that they have a male or a female that I don't have, we'll be able to graft a male pistachio to the female tree and see if we can get pollination that way. So anyway, that's how I'm going to overcome the problem of it taking eight years to fruit and not knowing whether or not you have male or female trees. Hopefully it's not going to be an issue. But anyway, this is the update on my pistachio tree. So here we are in my new food forest area and overall it's done really well. We've had some losses, but not too many. And I wanted to kind of show you what has thrived, what is just barely surviving and what died. So here we go. Now the first plant I'm going to showcase is my Aurora honeyberry. We showed you the Borealis on the other side. The original Borealis that I bought died, so that other one is a newer one. This is the original Aurora honeyberry. As you can see, we have some uh, weevil damage on it. 
and it hasn't grown too much, but it hasn't died and it still looks healthy. So we have that one. And then I had to buy another blue banana. And as you can see, it's doing quite well. We've got new growth on it, so I have high hopes for it next year. The blue banana is supposed to be really sweet. One of the sweeter honeyberries. So hopefully we're going to be able to pollinate it with either the Aurora or the Borealis and see if we can get some fruit because this is supposedly a later fruiting variety. So hopefully the Aurora and the Borealis are able to pollinate it. We have the current bush. Um, I'm wondering if it's just not getting enough sun. We also have weevil damage on it. I'm going to see if I can get some, I guess they're nematodes that supposedly help control the the weevils for next year. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, I've got to find a way to control the weevil damage on this. It also had aphids, which caused the ends to curl. So overall, this was not a great year for this plant, but we're going to try again next year because the fruit was quite tasty. There was just a little bit of it last year, but it was a, it was a fun plant to have. So I really like that one. We lost every single one of my sea kale except for one, and it's slowly putting on growth. So I'm hoping next year it does a lot better. So this is sea kale, every part of it is edible. And I have not used it yet, and I'm just gonna wait until next year just to make sure we have a healthy plant. And then maybe I can start some root cuttings and start some more. The bananas are still alive, barely. <laughs> this one is a lot healthier and a lot happier. You can see it's actually starting a pup on the other side you know, there's two of them from what i've heard especially the first year you need to remove the pups so i've been removing the pups so that if i can get this to survive the winter it will fruit next year so this is the musa valentina um, which is a pink banana supposedly mildly edible you know maybe not extremely flavorable flavorful but to have a fruiting banana in utah i think would be a lot of fun so we're going to heavily protect this over the winter and see what we can do this poor little guy over here got heavily hit by hail and my hose. I ended up dragging the hose over it a couple of times, which is my fault and bad, but it's still getting new growth and it's thrown up several new pups that I've been removing. There's a new one right there. So he may survive. We'll see. This area of the food forest, I'm not going to cover too well. You know, we've covered it in the past in the garden vlogs. Gardens are doing excellent. The artichokes did not flower this year, but they are absolutely gorgeous and huge. So this area may change a little bit next year. I'm, we'll see what happens. I need to see if I have the energy and the time to put in a greenhouse or at least a high tunnel hoop house. And we'll see if I have room. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this area. I have some new plants. These are ground cover raspberries. I have four different varieties that I bought from a local lady here. And supposedly they have good fruit. We'll try them out and see how they do. They're looking quite healthy right now and they're supposedly very hardy. So we'll try, we'll see how those do. Now, right here, I have a brand new fig. It's a oh, Violette something or other, or I guess another name for it is Negron but it had fruit on it when I bought it and I took the fruit off just so that we can give it a fighting chance to grow roots. But this is a brand new little fig and I'm really excited about it. This is the Chicago hardy fig that my friend grew from a cutting. It has not had the same growth as the other figs have, but it looks quite healthy. So I think that it will continue to grow and do well next year. This is an exciting plant. This is a Chinese tune. I'll link a video up at the top where I planted a Chinese tune or Chinese mahogany tree uh, last year or the year before that died in the fall due to a really heavy uh, fall freeze, an early heavy fall freeze. Now this one has got a lot of great growth. It was planted earlier. It has more of roots of, around it and I'm going to have everything ready to cover it and protect it you know, just in case of the early fall freezes and protect it over the winter and see how it does. Now, the Chinese mahogany, the new growth, especially in the spring, is edible and supposedly tastes like beef. 
So that's what we're going to grow this for. Now this one, I'm going to have to take a picture and put it on some of the fig websites. I purchased this from One Greed World and it was labeled the Improved Celeste. And I had a friend over the other day who looked at this and said, this is absolutely not a, an Improved Celeste. It does not look anything like hers. The leaves are totally different. So if you know what kind of fig this could possibly be, so you know if it's not Improved Celeste, I don't know if it's even going to be a hardy fig. So I'm going to reach out to uh, One Green World and send them a picture of it and see if I can actually get an improved Celeste and see if they know what, they, what it is that they sent me. So anyway, it's grown really well, but I've had no figs on it. So it's, it's very happy. So we'll, we'll see what's going on with this tree. Now the one that I am worried about that hasn't died yet. This one is not thriving. We did get a little bit of new growth. This is my uh, Giro persimmon. It's just stayed as one stalk, has not died, had one little tip of new growth, and then it stopped growing. And I, you know, I usually don't fertilize fruit trees, in, you know, new fruit trees, but I may try to throw a little fertilizer down. Well, actually, I'll probably wait till next year and see if it survives. We'll just have to see how this goes. So I'm a little worried about my persimmon. This was a pawpaw. This was my LSU uh, Davis pawpaw and it died. This one did not survive. So I'm gonna have to see what I'm gonna plant here. I may do another pawpaw or I may, I, I may go towards more nut trees now. I may end up putting a nut tree here since fruit is questionable which makes me sad. They'll say that over and over again. I'm going to do a video about that next and let you know what's going on and the possible plans. This is my Asian pear. It has done really, really well. I bought it as a bare root and then put it in a pot and did not get this planted until June. And we're getting some magnificent new growth on it. So I think I'm going to take the tips off of that to help it bush out for next year. One issue we have had is growth at the base that it looks like we're going to be battling every year. So we'll just have to keep pulling those off while they're young. But that one is doing really well. So last of all, here we are up where my citrus trees are spending their summer. They're doing okay, considering I don't do pots well. They actually had flowers. This is my little uh, mandarin orange. It's a Satsuma man dwarf awari satsuma mandarin orange which is a little more cold hardy but as you can see i've had some fertility issues the fish emulsion and the citrus fertilizer that i'm using has not been enough for it so i went onto one of the facebook pages that deals with growing citrus in containers and i'm going to start a different fertilizer routine as soon as those come and i will cover that in another video this is my avocado that is not dead this is definitely, absolutely a, just a real experiment. I have no hope of it surviving long enough to fruit, but maybe it will. So you can always try. This is a Mexicola. So it's a more, more cold hardy avocado that's gonna have to go indoors well before the first frost. Matter of fact, it may have to go indoors shortly because the nights are gonna start hitting the 40s, which is a little cold for it. And it's a dwarf. So supposedly they do better in pots. I found that this needs a lot more water than my citrus does. So we'll see how that does, but it's still growing. This is my Meyer lemon, improved Meyer lemon. I still have my little lemon there. It's really been struggling with fertility. So we'll see if we can bump it out of this chlorosis or whatever is the issue. looks like chlorosis, but it might be magnesium also. But anyway, we're going to try and see if we can get this to do a little bit better. At least I have not killed them this year and we do have our first fruit. So I'm really excited about that. So thank you for coming with me on this garden adventure and for, you know, going through my food forest with me and seeing what's doing well and what's not. Now, my next video is a lot late. It's the video that I'm going to do on what I preserved in August. And I'm going to combine that video and talk a little bit about what has been going on with me, why I haven't done videos for a while, and why my food forest may have to change. We're still up in the air on that. And what's been going on health-wise with me. 
So I'm going to cover that in the next video. Don't worry, I'm fine. I'm not dying, of course. I'm, I'm doing fine. It's just, you know, there's some changes that have got to be made. I will talk to you in the next video. So in the meantime, go have a wonderful garden adventure and let me know what you're growing in your food forest because I'd love to hear about that. <music>